Hi, this is to help with conversions. So you're watching this video. We are going to go over conversions. We're going to do a couple different examples. My first example is going to be converting one unit to a different unit. My second example will involve two units, miles per hour, meters per second. My third example after that, we will have some square units. Then we'll look at an area problem. And then our last one, we'll look at Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit. So skip around as you want throughout this video. Okay, so to start off with, when we're doing conversions, our whole goal is about dividing out units. Remember that if we have common factors in the numerator and the denominator of our fraction, we can divide those out and they divide to one. So for an example, if we have something like meters over meters, we can divide out the meters and then this would cancel out to one. We're going to be using that property a lot today and then we'll also be using another property if we have a whole number like a whole number three we can rewrite this as three over one all right so let's get into it okay so the first example we're looking at we are going to be converting days to hours or hours to days just some general advice when you are looking at conversion problems always use the conversion factor that's given to you some of the conversion factors are approximants, so you have to use the ones we give you in the problem, otherwise your answer could come up slightly off. We do have some conversion factors that are exact, so for example, one day to 24 hours, that is an exact conversion, but there are some that are not exact, so like meters to miles, those are going to be rounded, so make sure you do use the conversion factors we give you for each of the problems. Okay, so we're going to answer the following question. We have the conversion factor of one day equals 24 hours. So let's start by saying we want to convert three days to hours. Okay, so we're going three days. Our goal for this problem is to get to something hours. Okay, so as we do this, we're going to focus on setting everything up as fractions. We're going to multiply our fractions together, and we're going to use the fractions to make sure we divide out the common factors. So if I'm looking at A, I have three days. First thing I want to remember, this is a whole number, so I'm going to go ahead and write it as 3 over 1 to put it into a fraction form. Okay, we want to multiply this by another fraction that will divide out the days and leave us with hours. Because our goal here is to have the units in hours, so we want the days to divide out and we're left with hours. This is when we go and we'll look at the conversion factor that we're given. We're given one day is equal to 24 hours. So that's what we're going to use in the second fraction here. When we set this up, we need the days to cancel. So when you're thinking about how to put in your conversion factor, you should be telling yourself, I need that unit of days to cancel. So my unit of days has to be in the denominator. It starts in the numerator, so it has to be in the denominator to cancel. If days goes in the denominator, that means my hours, the days and the hours, the hours are forced to go in the numerator, which is also good. We want our final answer to be terms of hours, not per hours. We want the hours in the numerator of our final answer. So it's good that it's in the numerator here. Once we get the unit set up, then we can put in the numerical values. One day is equal to 24 hours. So I match the one up with the days, I match the 24 up with the hours. And then at this point, I do double check my units. So I have days in the numerator, days in the denominator, so I know days are gonna divide out. I have hours in the numerator. I want hours in the numerator of my answer. I don't have hours in the denominator, so I know hours is gonna stay as part of my final answer. So then my last step is to go ahead and do the multiplication. So here we have 3 over 1 times 24 over 1. So that gives us 72 hours. Okay, let's do it backwards. So part B. Part B, we're converting 80 hours to days. So we need to take 80 hours and we're going to convert it to some number in days. So to do this, we need to multiply by a fraction. And again, 80 hours, this is a whole number, so we can think of this like 80 over one. Okay, so now we need to multiply 80 hours by a fraction, so hours will divide out and we're left with days. So using again that same conversion factor, 
one day is equal to 24 hours. This time, we would have to put hours in the denominator. So we have the term hours in the numerator. I'm going to write it without the S. Hours in that numerator, we want days as our final answer. We don't want hours as the final answer. So we need to divide out hours. The only way to divide out hours is to have it on the opposite side of the fraction bar. So it goes in the numerator, or sorry, it goes in the denominator. It started in the numerator, so it goes in the denominator to divide out. So then if we have hours in the numerator, hours in the denominator, they will divide out. Since hours goes in the denominator, that forces days to go in the numerator, which is also good because we need days as our final answer. We want it in the numerator as well. So we know that's good. We're kind of double checking our work as we go. Once we have the units lined up the way we want, we match up the numbers. One day is equal to 24 hours. So I put the one with the day, 24 with the hours, and then this time I go ahead and do the evaluation. So this would be 80 times one over one times 24. So this will give us 80 over 24. And then we're left with that last unit of days, the hours divided out, so we're left with days. And then we can go ahead and approximate this. So if you plug this in your calculator, this gives you 3.33 days rounded. Okay, let's take a look at another example. So this example, we're gonna convert 60 miles per hour to kilometers per second. So this time we're gonna have two units in the one problem that we're going to be working with as we're converting. So again, let's write out what we're starting with. We are starting with 60 miles per hour. That per tells me that that is where our division is. That's where our fraction bar would be. So I wanna write this as 60 miles per hours. I wanna put the hours in the denominator and then the 60 miles in the numerator. Okay, our goal here is to get to something kilometers per second. We want kilometers in the numerator. We want seconds in the denominator. Okay, so to do this problem, we have two units. We need to convert miles and we need to convert hours. When we have multiple units in one uh, problem, we want to pair up matching units. So miles and kilometers both measure distance. They both measure how far you've gone. So we know that we want to do a miles to kilometers conversion. Hours and seconds both measure time. So then we know we wanna do an hours per second conversion. So I'm gonna color code this. We are going to do one conversion of taking the miles to kilometers. And then our next conversion, we are going to be taking hours to seconds. Okay, let's start with miles to kilometers. Since we are multiplying, it does not matter the order you go in. So if you have hours to seconds as your second step, you will still get to the correct answer. Okay, kilometers, miles to kilometers. Miles is starting in the numerator. We have our miles here in the numerator. So I know I'm forced to put miles in the denominator because I want the miles to divide out. Since the miles goes in the denominator, that means I need to put kilometers in the numerator. Kilometers needs to be in the numerator for the final answer, so that is good. Now let's match up our numbers. We'll be looking at the second conversion factor here. Notice the second conversion factor, we have approximate instead of equals. That means we have rounded that 1.61. This is where you need to make sure you take our conversion factors instead of one you find online. If you take one you find online, your rounding could be slightly off. Okay, so we have one mile to 1.61 kilometers. One goes in the denominator, 1.61 goes in the numerator because we have one mile in the denominator, 1.61 kilometers in the numerator. Okay, now let's do hours to seconds. Hours, we can write it as H or we can write it with that HR. I'm gonna do the HR to stay consistent with my table. We are now looking at the first conversion factor in our table. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. Hours starts in the denominator in our very initial thing. We have hours in the denominator. So to divide that out, we have to put hours in the numerator. So hours has to go in the numerator. 
since ours is in the numerator, that forces our seconds to be in the denominator. We want seconds to be in the denominator of our final answer, so that is good. We're double checking ourselves. Okay, and then let's put in our conversion facts. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds. So I put the one in the numerator with the hour. I put the 3,600 in the denominator with the seconds. So when we do our multiplication, miles will divide out, hours will divide out. Kilometers, seconds, do not divide out. Our final answer needs to be in kilometers per second. So our units are lined up correctly. Okay, once we double check our units, now we can go ahead and do the multiplication and the division. So multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator, and then divide. When you do this, you should get 0 0.0268 kilometers per second. Practice doing it in your calculator. Multiply the numerator, multiply the denominator, then divide. If you want to do it all in one step, open your parentheses, multiply out the numerator, close the parentheses, divide, open parentheses, multiply out the denominator, close the parentheses. All right, so 60 miles per hour is equal to 0 0.0268 kilometers per second. All right, so now let's say we're looking at an example. The example says convert 50 square feet per hour to square inches per day. Okay, so what we have going on here is we have 50 square feet. You can write that as feet squared, square feet, feet squared per hour. And then our goal is to get two square inches or inches squared per day. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about this feet squared. When you have feet squared per hour, this is the same thing as thinking of the thinking of this as feet times feet per hour. When you have that squared, what that is telling you is you're having two of those variables or two of those units being multiplied together to build that square. Feet times feet gives you feet squared. Feet squared is the same as feet times feet. So what we're doing is we're taking feet times feet per hour and we're converting this to inches squared per day. Inches squared per day is the same thing as inches times inches per day. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this with feet times feet. Okay, so when we set up our conversion factors here, when we set up our different fractions, we are going to have three steps. We are going to have one step that's going to convert our feet to inches. We're going feet squared per hour to inches squared per day. Feet and inches both measure up distance, so we're going to match those together. Hours and days both me measure time, so we're going to match those together. We need one feet to inches to take care of one of the feet. We do a second feet per inches to take care of the second feet. We have feet squared. We have two feet, so we do the conversion twice. And then the third step with this will take our hours to days. So... Our feet squared, we're going to do in two steps. We're going to divide out the feet twice. That will also give us inches twice. will give us our inches squared. And then we'll do the one step with hours to days. Okay, feet to inches. First one. Feet start in the numerator, so feet have to be in the denominator. This forces inches in the numerator. We have one foot is equal to 12 inches as our conversion factor. So we'll have one in the denominator with the feet unit, 12 in the numerator with the inches unit. Inches needs to be in the numerator of our final answer. Inches is in the numerator of our step, so that is good. We need another feet to inches. We need to do it again, because again, that feet squared is feet times feet, so we need another feet to inches. The second feet, this is the one we're looking at, the second one, the second foot here is in the numerator. We need to divide it out, so it has to go in the denominator. Since the foot went in the denominator, the inch has to go in the numerator. And then the last one I'll do in red. Hours to days. Hours starts in the denominator, so hours must go in the numerator. 
Ours starts in the denominator, so we have to put ours in the numerator to divide out. That forces days in the denominator. So then we match up our units. We have one day to 24 hours. So the one goes in the denominator with day, 24 goes in the numerator with hours. I forgot to line up my foot and inches for my second one. One foot is equal to 12 inches, so one would go in the denominator, 12 would go in the numerator. And then to make sure all of our units cancel, we have one foot canceling with one foot. We have the second foot canceling with the second foot. We have hours and hours canceling. We're left with inches, inches, day. That will give us our inches squared per day, which is what we want as our final answer. So as our last step here, we'll do all the multiplication. So when you do this, I'm gonna write this down below. When you do all of this multiplication, you should get out, it's a large number here, 172,800 172, inches squared per day. Remember, we're left with inches times inches, that inches times inches gives us the inches squared. It's because we have the inches twice in our steps. That's where the inches squared comes. Then we have the per day there lined up. You take the five times 12 times 12 times 24 divided by one gives you 172,800 inches squared per day. All right, let's do an application problem and then we'll do a Celsius and Fahrenheit problem. Okay, so let's say you have a rectangle. This could be a picture frame, um, it could be a poster or something like that. You have a rectangle. It's measuring three meters and 2.5 meters wide. Three meters long, 2.5 meters wide. So what we have here, some sort of rectangle, three meters long, 2.5 meters wide. We wanna find the area of our rectangle in square yards. So we wanna find the area in square yards. Okay, there are two different ways to do this problem. I'm gonna walk you through the way I always recommend, the way I like to do the problem, and then I'll talk you through the other way you could do the problem. Okay, first way you could do the problem, we need to find area in square yards. Our units are in meters. So what we can do, we can take our initial units, convert them to yards. Once we have our initial units converted to yards, then we'll calculate the area. Okay, so first step. We're gonna take three meters, 2.5 meters, and we're gonna convert them to yards. Okay, we have our conversion fact up here. Remember, we're dealing with whole numbers, so we wanna think of these each as over one. We have three meters, we need to be in yards, so we need to multiply this by something that divides out the meters. We have our conversion fact of one yard is approximately 0 0.91 meters, so we can put the meters in the denominator to divide out yards in the numerator. So this becomes one yard is equal to 0 0.91 meters. We do that three times one divided by one times 0 0.91. We get 3.297 yards. We start with three meters. So we need the meters in our conversion factor in the denominator. So the meters divide out. So the meters are dividing out. We're left with yards, and then we match up the number. One yard to approximately 0 0.91 meters. So the one went with yards, 0 0.91 went with meters. Do the same thing for 2.5. Meters starts in the numerator. So meters needs to be in the denominator to divide out. Forces yards to be in the numerator. One yard, 0 0.91 meters. Do our multiplication, we get 2.747 yards. Again, meters are gonna cancel, left with yards. Okay, once you have your dimensions in yards, now we're looking at our rectangle and now it is 3.297 yards by 2.747 yards. Once we have it in yards, now we can go ahead and calculate the area. So step two, we're gonna find the area. Remember area of our rectangle is length times width. We know how long it is, we know how wide it is. So our area will be that 
3.297 yards times 2.747 yards. When we multiply that out, that will give us 9.057 rounded yards times yards. And then remember yards times yards is yards squared. So 9.057 yards squared. That is a five, let me rewrite that. Okay, so our final answer here would be 9.057 yards squared. We took meters, we converted it to yards, then we calculated the area. That is the first way to do it. Second way to do it, if you wanted a different way, you could calculate the area first. So you could take the dimensions in meters, calculate the area, that gives you the area in meters squared. After you have the area in meters squared, then you convert it to yards squared. When you do the conversion, you will have to do it twice because of the square. So you'd want to follow what we did with the feet and inches in the previous example. So two ways to do it. I personally like doing the convert meters to yards first and then calculate the area. And that is the way we did it on the screen today. Okay, one last problem to do. Let's talk about Celsius and Fahrenheit. When you see Celsius and Fahrenheit, the conversions are gonna look a little bit differently because you're gonna be given formulas instead of just like a table that says one Celsius is equal to so many Fahrenheit. You're gonna be given these equations. So we have Fahrenheit is equal to nine fifths Celsius plus 32, or we have Celsius is equal to five ninths times Fahrenheit minus 32. First thing to notice, those parentheses in the second example are very important. Make sure you are paying attention to those as you're doing the problem. Okay, so we need to convert 40 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. We know Fahrenheit and we're looking for Celsius. So since we're looking for Celsius, we're trying to find something where Celsius is equal to something that depends on Fahrenheit. If you look at our second example, we have Celsius depending on Fahrenheit. So this is the one we wanna use. If you were given the Celsius and looking for Fahrenheit, then you'd use the first one because Fahrenheit depends on Celsius. Here, Celsius depends on Fahrenheit. So this is the equation we wanna use. We're looking for C, it's C equals. So we have C equals 5 ninths times F minus 32. Substituting, substituting what we know for F, that's the 40. So this gives us 5 ninths times 40 minus 32. Order of operations, very important here. Make sure you subtract, then multiply. And you should get 4.44 degrees Celsius. So 40 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to 4.4 degrees Celsius, approximately. We had to do a little rounding. Okay, I hope this helps with the conversions. If you guys have any more questions, please contact your instructor.